This is a tutorial that demonstrates how to choose public and private RSA keys. It's called a paper and pencil example because we're using really small numbers so that it's easy to see how it all works. So the first thing to do is to select two large random prime numbers, P and Q. Our numbers will be small. We're going to calculate the RSA modulus by mod multiplying them together. So I'm going to pick for P the number 11. And for Q, I'm going to pick five. And once again, I'm doing this, I'm picking numbers that are very small for the example. So my RSA modulus, or N, is going to be 11 times five, and that is equal to 55. Okay, now we need to calculate the totient of the RSA modulus. So what that means, uh, the totient of the RSA modulus is P minus 1 times Q minus 1. So P minus 1 is 10 times, and then Q minus 1, which is 4. So our totient is going to be 40. The next step is to select a number E that is relatively prime to the totient, and is greater than 1 and less than the totient, or 40. E is going to be part of our public key. And a number is relatively prime to another number if those two numbers don't share any other factors except for 1. And so for our totient, 3 would be relatively prime, 7, 9, 11, 13, 17, and I could go on, but that would take up a great deal of space. And so for this example, I'm going to pick seven as E because it is relatively prime and it's a small number and it's easy to calculate. Okay, for the next step, we need to find the modular inverse of E with respect to the totient. So we'll call this number D, and it's going to be part of our private key. So in other words, for the following equation, E times D mod the totient is equal to 1, we need to solve for D. And we'll do this by using the extended Euclidean algorithm. The extended Euclidean algorithm has two steps. But before we get started, we're going to substitute 7 and 40 for E and the totient so that we know what we're working towards. And so for the first step, what we're going to do is transform our 40 and our 7 and put it into a Euclidean equation. And if you ever look up the Euclidean algorithm online, how to do it, you're going to see an equation just like this. From this, we're going to take the 40 and put it on the left-hand side of an equal sign. We'll take 7 and put it on the right-hand side and ask, how many times does 7 go into 40? The answer is 5. So 5 times 7 is 35, so we need to add 5 to balance out our equation. So the next thing that we do is we take the 5 and the 7, and we need to move that to the next line. And so we're going to put 7 down on one side of an, of an equal sign, put a 5 in, and ask how many times does 5 go into 7? The answer is 1. And to balance out this equation, we're going to add 2. And we're going to do the same thing again. So we'll take 5 and we'll take 2. We'll put 5 on the left-hand side of an equal sign. We'll put 2 on the right-hand side of an equal sign. How many times does 2 go into 5? The answer is 2. And then to balance out this equation, we will add 1. Now at this point, we can stop. Anytime that you get to a point where you're adding 1 in the sequence, you know that you've gotten to a point where you can actually start doing the next step of the extended Euclidean algorithm. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to start with 1 because that's our goal. And we know that 1 from our step 1 is actually equal to 5 minus 2 times 2. That's our first step. And so what we're going to do is substitute then the next row, so 2, for the, the times 2 that we have 
and that equation. So we're going to say 5 is equal to 2 minus 2 times 7 minus 1 times 5. And so what we do is we distribute the 2 through that equation and we combine the like terms. And we'll have 1 is equal to 3 times 5 minus 2 times 7. For our next step, we're going to look at replacing the 5 or substituting the 5. And we can see from a step 1 that 5 is equal to 40 minus 5 times 7. So we'll have 3 times, and that big thing from above, minus 2 times 7. So it's going to be 3 times 40 minus 5 times 7. And if we combine the like terms, 1 is going to be equal to 3 times 40 minus 17 times 7. Okay, from this point, we care about what is sitting in front of the times 7. And we can see that it's a negative number. If it were a positive number, we would be done, and we would actually have our modular inverse. But since it's a negative number, we actually have to do one extra thing. We have to take the totient and then subtract the number that is sitting next to the 7. And so 40 minus 17 is equal to 23. So in this case, our modular inverse d is equal to 23. And now we have everything that we need to list out our RSA keys. For this, we have the RSA modulus, which is n. We have e and we have d. And so for our private key, the key is going to be d and then the RSA modulus n. And so that will be 2355. For our public key, we're going to use e and the RSA modulus. And so our public key is going to be 7 and 55. And there you have it.